Good morning, everybody. I hope all of you have been doing well and try to be physically and mentally healthy. Beginning of our Dharma class, all of you already generate proper motivation. Make sure the motivation you continuously generate until the end of the class. Our class, we begin with the meditation, with the eight verses for the training the mind. I hope many of you already memorize. And end of the class, I will ask some of you to recite the verses from the uh, eight verses for mind training, also from the seven points. Our life is so busy, so you have to do so many things on Saturday and Sunday. Still you sacrifice so many things and try to attend the class. I really, really appreciate, very much appreciate to you all to attend the class. The most importantly, the knowledge, the experience, the ideas you have in your mind, make sure you apply every moment while you are eating, drinking, walking, looking, watching, whatever you do for the 24 hours, make sure you always done things with the Dharma. Then your activities for 24 hours can be joined with the Dharma. First, generating bodhicitta. The first stanzas. With the determination to achieve the highest aim for the benefit of all sentient beings, which is surprises even the wishful feeling gem. May I hold them dear at all time. Please generate bodhicitta followed by the first stanza. Dani Sanjan Tamjela, Ijin Rupo Lela. Tanjo Tube Sambai Tadu Jebaran Zimbar Show. Second, since you practicing bodhicitta, then you should not have any sense of pride, ego. Always remember the great kindness of all sentient beings. Therefore, second stanza. Whenever I inter interact with someone, may I view myself as the lowest among all. And from the very depth of my heart, respectfully hold others as superior. Good. 
quand au Soudan Robesé, Dani Gulla Meldaji, Jean La Samba Tabai, Chodo Chebar and Zimbar Show. Since you practice Bodhicitta based on great compassion, we always respect other are superior than you. Whatever good things happen in our life, we always remember it has happened to me because of others. All my happiness, all my goodness are only depends on other, others. Therefore, I must realize it, respect them superior than myself. Without others, we cannot survive. Second, contemplating the, the negative thoughts, the unhealthy minds. In all my deeds, may I prove into my mind and as soon as mental and effect, emotional affliction arise, as they danger, endanger myself and others, may I strongly confound them and avoid them. Chalam Gundu Rangula Taji Nyamu Hemata Ranjan Marun Chebena Zenta Dune Dobar Show. Since we practicing Bodhicitta, we always wish to be Buddha to benefit all sentient beings in order to achieve buddhahood in order to be a buddha we need to eliminate the obstacles the great obstacle which is the afflictive emotions include ignorance particularly anger and hatred if you are a very angry person, if you have a very strong hatred towards someone, you cannot generate great compassion, then cannot cultivate bodhicitta, then cannot be a Buddha, cannot achieve Buddhahood. Therefore, for the 24 hours, we'll always checked with our mind make sure there's not any afflict emotions particularly make sure there's no anger hatred when you realize uh, there's a uh, anger and hatred or any kinds of affliction emotion arises already arise going to arise will arise when you notice Immediately, you need to control, you need to stop them, continue the errors. Particularly controlling hatred and anger. Number four, when I see beginnings of uh, beings of the unpleasant character and those who are processed by the strong negativity and sufferings, may I hold them dear, for they are rare to find, as I have discovered jewel treasure. Particularly when you see 
when you hear your enemy having so many problems, when you see, when you meet very unpleasant people around you, we should not gen generate sense of hate and anger. Instead of generating anger and hate, we must generate love and compassion. Because love and compassion are the most important cause for generating the chitta and most important cause to achieve Buddhahood. Therefore, we always need to control anger and hatred, always generate love and compassion towards all sentient beings, particularly the unpleasant character person within your families, within your friends, within your co-worker, whoever, you know, cause to arouse anger you, you must generate love and compassion. If we ever to develop compassion and love towards the particular your enemy, then there's no anger no hatred. If there's no, no anger in the head, then you always able to cultivate compassion towards them. Then for us very easy to cultivate love and compassion towards other sentient beings. Number five, When other, others are of jealousy, treat me wrongly with abuse, slander, scorn. May I take upon myself the defeat and offer to other victory. The jealousy is one of the, the mind which has caused so many problems. You are a very honest person. Then people jealous you. When you are very honest, some of your friends praise you, admire you, then some other friend jealous you. You become a very successful person based on honesty, based on your own effort, intelligence, then many people jealous you. Due to the jealousy, the people spread so many rumor about you, about your families, about your wife, about your husband, about your children, because of jealousy. Due to your successful life, due to your honesty, also people get angry, upset about you. They cannot bear the anger and upset. Again, you know, they create a lot of problems. That moment, make sure what you need to think. If they feel happy, slander me, scorn me, abuse me, let them. Because I always wish them happy. They feel so happy when they abuse me, they slander me, they scorn me, they criticize me, it's good for them. I also wish them happy. If they're happy, feel happy to abuse, about abusing me, let them, I don't care. That means you really, you are willing to, willingly accepting the the defeat, 
and offer the uh, victory. So this is linked with the practice of giving and taking. So, so how, you know, let's say, you know, so you are very compassionate, you always practice patience. Then at the end, if they abuse you, they slander you, scorn you, criticize you. At the end, if they would kill you, then you must think they can kill me only this lifetime. I'm okay to give up my life in order to continuously practice great compassion, bodhicitta, or becoming Buddha. Therefore, in the future, when I become a Buddha, first, my knowledge, the first time when I teach Dharma, I share my teaching of those people who abuse me, those people who harm me, those people who kill me. Uh, therefore, Buddha Shakyamuni, when he was, uh, I think, uh, it, he, he was born as a fish. Then some of the people really killed him. That time, he did a uh, aspiration, prayers. Right now, they are sharing, they are taking my body, they are eating my body. In the future, when I become Buddha, first time, I share my dharma with them. With them. Therefore, the five, uh, uh, five disciples, the first five disciples were used to be his enemy when he was a fish. Right? And also, so we follow like Kadamba tradition. We follow Adisha and also follow the Lama Selimba. For them, there's a first two teaching taught by Buddha. One is the, the biography or history of the previous life of the Buddha Shakyamuni. One is uh, particularly, I think, collection teaching. When you read the, uh, the previous biography of Buddha Shakyamuni, one lifetime, he was meditating in the forest. Then he saw one of the tiger mother was so hungry, could not get food for many days. Then the, the mother tiger want to eat his own cup, his own baby. He was, you know, he really wanted to eat, but he was so hungry. Then the, the previous Buddha Shakyamuni life, that he saw, for oh, he's very hungry. Now he's going to his, eat his own like baby. It's a very unethical. Then he asked his disciple, why not we just go around, get some food, or meat for the tiger. The rest of the students, they went in the forest for searching food for the tiger. That time, you know, one of the love of the Buddha Shakyamuni, he killed himself and offered the body to the tiger. And that time, he, he also made a strong prayers in the future, when I become a Buddha, I share my teaching with this tiger wherever he was born. Therefore, if you seriously practice great compassion, you no need to worry anything except always practice compassion and you become a Buddha. Therefore here, when other out of jealousy treat me wrongly, with abuse, slander, scorn, may I take upon myself the defeat and offer other victoria. So 
the defeat is for the just short time. Long, long time, you can get a lot of benefit. For example, when you are very angry and upset with your family, one of your family, then the family call you, shout you on you. That time, if you're not able to practice patience, then you're you know, shouting back, fighting back, then the fighting become very serious. It's go for many, many years. At that moment, if you're able to be patient, just be quiet, not just only quiet, you realize the consequence of anger, <clears throat> in a, and then quietly, you just practice love and compassion. For the short time, you are victim from someone, for the long time, you are actually victory. So in order to achieve, you know, the greater achievement, sometimes we need to signify, right? Therefore, the next one, when someone whom I have, or in whom I, ha I have placed great hopes, mistreat me extremely hurtful ways, may I regret, regret them, still my precious teachers. These are very common, have been in the society. So many times already happened to us. That time, we should not lose the sense of love and compassion towards a particular group of people, particular the person or whoever. Because our achievement is achieving Buddhahood. Achieving Buddhahood. If you lose your love and compassion for the little reason, for little things, then you lose your great achievement. Right? Therefore, make sure so particularly is happened to your life will happen, is happening now, make sure you should not lose your love and compassion. Please never exclude those people in your daily practice and meditation. Here I will tell you one story in my monastery, I think 1980s. We have a Western monk, Western person, he became a monk. In my monastery, we have a 16 hostel, different kind of in hostel. It's like we are from Ladakh, that I belongs to Nari hostel. So we have a 16 hostel. A monk can, you know, stay there. Then the Western monk, he requests to the monastery, I'm from Western country. I don't have a like a Western hostel. I want to establish a Western hostel. That the monastery give permission for building a Western hostel. Then he was building a hostel, I think almost six, seven rooms, kitchen and dining hall. So he needs, he needed water for building. Then that time we have one common water tank. So there's a one, there's a two monks who are in charge of the water. And the Western monk went to see the monk, ask him give a water. And the monk give water, but he give very little water all the time. He released water for a short time, he stopped. Because there's no enough water for the rest of the hostel. Then the Western monk gets so angry towards the monk. Mom, very angry because he was building a hostel. He need water. There's no enough water. He became very angry. Then later, you know, he was studying Lamrim. He tried to practicing love and compassion. Then he said to his teacher, I can practice love and compassion towards all sentient beings, 
except the monk and the muskoder, muskoder, right? Except the monk and the muskoder, he cannot practice. Then he said, I want to exclude these two beings, the monk and the muskoder. Then how he can practice great compassion. And also during the one of the Rinpoche, many of you heard about the Zong Rinpoche from Galen Sharje Monastery. He was a very high practitioner. Many people perform him black magic. The black, the power for black magic cannot really harm him. He was a very high practitioner. And he was giving a teaching. They said, okay, now everybody cultivate great compassion for all sentient beings that everybody practice, right? Then one monk said, when I close my eyes, generate love and compassion, the particular monk always appear to me, disturb me, I cannot practice compassion because he really angry with the, those particular person, right? Therefore make sure when someone whom I have had or in, in whom I have placed great hopes, mistreat me extremely hurtful way, may I regard them still as my precious teacher. In brief, may I offer benefit and joy to all my mothers, both directly and indirectly. May I quietly take upon myself all hearts and pain of my mothers practice giving and taking. Then the, the Edward says is kind of like a summary of the, the previous practice and particularly the ultimate bodhicitta. May all this remain undefeated by the stain of Ed Menden's conscience and may I, recognizing all things as illusions, devoid of clinging, by release from bondage. So this is also very important because so monthly we do Thara Puja, Medicine Buddha Puja, or Guru Puja. Also in your daily life, you have been doing so many chanting, recitation, meditation, practicing, make sure all the practices must be very pure. Should not think about name and fame, gaining, just with a pure motivation. Somebody very much praise you about your practice. You should not feel, oh, I'm high practitioner. Or somebody criticize you about your practice. You should not get angry and upset. Through, through your knowledge and your practice as somebody, you know, you should not hope somebody going to praise you, somebody going to appreciate you. You totally, need, you need to despite all these things. You just think, I'm doing this practice for achieving Buddhahood, to benefit all sentient beings. I don't care any of the worldly name and fame, you know, the gaining and loss. Think about, you know, like many people wish to have a very famous, wish to be very famous in the society or in the, or in, the in the nation, in the world. The name, the becoming famous, the, the famous name remain until you died. After you death, your famous name will finish. But in order to have achieved the famous name, being famous, you have to go through a lot of, you know, unethical things. Therefore, we try to be very pure practitioner, practice Dharma very purely. Therefore, we totally need to despite all the worldly, you know, consent, the worldly things, then we become be very pure practitioner. Because the Kadamba said, 
the four uh, detachment. If your mind, mind attached with a dislike, mean, you know, being a, want to be famous, want to be rich, want to be a popular, you, your mind is very attached with a dislike, then you cannot be Buddhist practitioner. Practitioner. Second, if your mind, mind attach with a samsaric happiness, samsaric pleasance, the samsaric things, then you cannot cultivate renunciation. You, do, you should not think I can generate cultivate renunciation. If your mind is attached, achieving liberation for yourself. You are, you are achieving liberation only benefit yourself. That you should not consider you follow Mahayan teaching. You should not consider I practicing, you know, I, I practice great compassion. If you have a self-centered attitude, if you have a very strong self shreshing we should not consider I practice bodhicitta. Therefore, we try to practice pivar dharma, right? So in order to practice pivar dharma, so in the past, we, 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 so we now, we just skip the seven points. We go uh, length of the path to enlightenment, few sentence, then we jump into the the meditation stage. At the beginning of the limb of the path, very clearly differentiate the three types of Buddhist practitioner who follow Buddha teaching. One, types of Buddhist practitioner practice Buddha teaching, follow Buddha teaching only in order to be happy this life, happy for next life. They are only surging the samsaric happiness. Still, they follow Buddha teaching. They practice Buddhism, but their achievement is only the samsaric happiness, only this life or for next life. If you are this kind of person, you always wish to be happy this life, you know, want to be happy next life. I, I don't care the liberation without, I want to be happy in samsara. Then what you need to practice? You, you need to practice the, the 10 virtuous actions. 10 virtuous actions. And award the 10 non-virtuous action. Then, you can be very happy this life, you can be happy in next life, you can be happy in samsara. You only achieve a samsara happiness. Then many of us think, oh, practicing 10 virtues action is very easy. It's not easy at all. For example, first, three from the body action. Healing stealing, sexual misconduct, lying, right? It's not easy to avoid them. Therefore, first, the small scope being. Second, is explained very clearly. If you wish to be arahat, only seeking liberation, your own benefit. It's also okay, you have a right to seek whatever you want. If you only seeking liberation, your own benefit, only your own benefit, then what you need to practice. Then top of the six, so 10 virtuous actions, you need to generate renunciation. You need to realize selflessness. Then a renunciation and selflessness, 
must practice with the three mind trainings. Then you can be, you know, arhat, you achieve arhat step. Then third, you are not only, you know, achieve liberation, you, are all, you wish to achieve liberation for benefit for others. Then I said top of practicing 10 virtues action, renunciation, selflessness or emptiness, then you need to practice great compassion. Because you need to cultivate bodhicitta. Then remember in order to practice bodhicitta as a foundation, first you need to practice equanimity. Equanimity, then uh, love and compassion. So make sure you should not have a misunderstanding of equanimity. Mean, you know, equal, you first, you need to equalize your friends, your enemy. Until today, we have a very strong attachment towards our friends and relatives. We have very strong anger, strong hatred towards our enemy. Due to this mental factor, we have been suffering for so many years. First, you need to equalize your enemy and your friends, right? So how we should equalize them? Then first you visualize the indifferent person whom you are neither your friends nor your enemy. Visualize the person. The thing about the person is the person one suffering or not? No. The different, you know, the, the neutral person, he or she doesn't want any suffering. He or she want only happiness. Then you generate sense of, you know, wishing this person be happy. This person free from suffering. Then when you have very strong kind of love and compassion towards them, then second, you visualize your friends. When you visualize your friends, yes, then you think, they, do they need suffering or happiness? Yes, definitely they want happiness and want suffering. Therefore, first you need to equalize your enemy, your friends, and uh, the neutral person. Then for you, is you need to feel, not you know, just verbally say, you need, really need to feel for me, my enemy, my friends or relatives, the neutral person are same. I wish all of them be happy. I wish all of them equally free from suffering. First, equanimity. Then second, need to generate love. Then compassion, then bodhicitta. After bodhicitta, then we need to practice. Then you remember after bodhicitta, then you need to take our vows or precept from the actual guru or from the in front of the holy object we already discussed. After you take a vows, vows mean you have a you are making a commitments. You're not just wishing all sentient being free from suffering. You're not just wishing only wishing all sentient being free from suffering. You are making a commitments. Since today, I will liberate all sentient beings from suffering. I will bring all sentient beings in the, in the enlightened state. Therefore, since today, I will engage into Bodhisattva's deeds, particularly the six perfections. Right? Then, among the six perfections, the generosity, they are easy to understand, but not easy to practice. 
particularly you know it's not easy to uh, generate not easy to achieve the wisdom so today we will discuss uh, why it is so important to uh, uh, accomplish come about in a special insight i hope you remember still i just uh, review just as a bird bird with under undeveloped wing cannot fly in the sky that right? under develop I mean haven't developed yet like the chicken like a baby cannot fly in the sky because it doesn't have the two wings those without power of highest perception cannot walk for the good for living beings without accomplish the special insight you cannot achieve buddhahood therefore we need to accomplish a special insight why in order to achieve buddhahood we need to accumulate two kinds of merits not virtues merits the easy way the true merit can be accumulated if we achieve the uh, karma body karma body and special insight therefore here the merit gain in a single day by those who possess the highest perception cannot be gain even the hundred lifetimes by one without such as highest perception when we accomplish the special insight we can gain the two kinds of merit very fastly very swiftly without the special insight we try to accumulate merit for 100 lifetime we cannot therefore we need to achieve the special insight that means special insight those who wants swiftly to uh, uh, complete the collection of the full enlightenment will accomplish higher perception through effort not through laziness laziness the two kinds of merit can be accumulated through effort not through laziness also laziness doesn't mean you you just you know sleep for a long time you are doing nothing from the buddhist point of view lazy can be many many types you not doing anything just drink you know eating and drinking and go around is also is considered as a laziness because you cannot really put in effort to practicing dharma also you are been so busy morning you make a breakfast i take a shower breakfast prepare for your lunch go your walk come back you know play your phone and computer you've been so busy from the buddhist point of view this also tub of laziness because you being become lazy to practice dharma therefore achieving uh, uh speech insight very much depend on an effort we need to put effort through effort not through laziness without attainment of karma bodying right without the without without attaining attainment of karma bodying higher perception will not occur once more without the attainment of karma bodying higher perception or is some special insight will not occur therefore make a repeated effort to accomplish the karma bodying now you can see the order from beginning 
you know, all the way love, compassion, bodhicitta, six perfection, particularly the sixth, the wisdom, and all the way to Buddhahood. Buddhahood can be achieved when we are able to accumulate the inner merit. The merit very easily, simply we can accumulate if we accomplish the spiritual insight. Special insight can be achieved if we have the karma body. Now you can see all the is very systematic karma body, right? The next question is how we can achieve karma body. While well, the condition of karma body are incomplete meditative civilization will not accomplish even if one meditate but, uh, uh, strenuously for the thousands of years. So we, how we can accomplish karma body? First, we need to accomplish the meditative civilization. The meditative civilization will not be accomplished even if one meditate uh, strenuously for the thousands of years. Uh, civilization, right? So here you must remember you should not mix mix up karma bodying and the uh, civilization, right? The meditative civilization. Now here is teaching us first we need to learn how to stabilize our mind. Meditative civilization, right? That means every time you need to learn first. First we need to learn how to uh, stabilize our mind how to stabilize your mind. When we try to concentrate, when, 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 we, when we try to you know, stabilize our mind, with a few minutes, so many thoughts pop up in our mind. For example, you want to chant the Mani Peme 100 times, one mala. When you start Om Mani Peme home, so there's only six syllables. When you say Om, while you chant Om, few thoughts pop up. That means our mind is not so stable. First, as a foundation, we need to learn how to stabilize our mind. That means first, able to focus on one object for you know short time. Then you can see the, all the disturbing thoughts come again, reconcentrate again and again. Then you got you got a foundation for practicing karma body. Otherwise, you know, it doesn't matter how much, how long you try to meditate on, you cannot. Thus, maintaining the well, the condition mentioned in the collection of meditation civilization chapter place the mind on one place the mind on any one virtuous focal object i mean first you focus on an object you focus on something which is positive things for example, if you focus, we can very much focus on like a pizza. You can focus on pizza continuously 10, 20 minutes, or you can focus on, you know, a particular object for 10, 20 minutes continuously. It is not considered as a meditation because this mind is neutral, the object also neutral. So when you focus on Buddha, 
image of the Buddha, we say Buddha, then the object itself is a, is a positive object. When you focus on Buddha, your mind, your mind become, become positive. This consider as a meditation. When you focus on impermanence, the object is neutral, but when you meditate on emptiness, impermanence, the money is the positive money. It brings a lot of positive result, positive consequence. Therefore, many people, you know, very much happy to focus on the breathing in and out, in and out, in and out for 10, 20 minutes, maybe a few hours. This is not really actual meditation. This is the, you know, the, this is the, this is the way way of how to turn our mind to focus on. It's not the actual, you know, the ultimate meditation. Therefore, he has said, place the mind on anyone, virtuous focal object. When the practitioner has gained come abiding, higher perception will also be gained. But without practice of the perfection of wisdom, the obscuration will not come to end, an end. Then, based on uh, the stabilization mind, the stabilization mind, you will achieve come abiding. Then you can achieve special insight. Special insight. The special insight not able to focus on emptiness, selflessness. Then the karma body, the special insight cannot be useful for as a Buddhist. Cannot be useful. That means you, you learn how to focus on a chosen object for a long time. Also, you are able to analyze the object without moving your focus. Mean, just say, you know, you are the, the negative example, let's say negative example, you are very much falling in love with someone. Then in your mind, you can see the person very clearly. You can see the person very clearly. At the same time, you can, you know, analyze all the good features of the person. That means you are fully focused the person at the, same time, at the same time, you are analyzing the quality, the good quality of the person. That means come about in the focus. Special insight, analyze, recall the quality of the object within the focusing the ob in the same object. So this is nothing special, nothing for Buddhist. When you focus on, on, on the chosen object for you know, one hour, you feel so happy, very bliss, because there's no any disturbing in your mind. For the Buddhist, this is nothing. If you have a, this kind of experience, you should not consider, oh, I'm quite high practitioner. I achieve you know, something very special, it's nothing. Because he has said very clearly, where the practitioner has gained the karma body, higher perception will also be gained. But without practice of the perfection of wisdom, the obscuration will not come to an end. Thus, to elim eliminate all obscuration, to liberation and omniscient, the practitioner should continuously cultivate the profession of wisdom with skillful means, right? So first question we ask all of you, I asked in the past many times, was Dharma make you, makes you different? What Dharma makes you different? It doesn't make you very rich. It doesn't make you physically beautiful. It doesn't make you very popular. What Dharma makes you different? First we said, 
since I practice Dharma, my mind become very calm. Since I practice Dharma, my, I, my anger is controlled. Since I practice Dharma, any other negative, you know, uh, uh, negative uh, kind of activities cannot affect me. Right? Therefore, Dharma makes you only different when you are able to control the negative things. Therefore, here, thus, to eliminate all the occurrences, we need to practice the special insight, particularly the wisdom, to liberation. Again, we need to practice the professional wisdom. In order to achieve omniscient, we need to practice the perfection of wisdom. Thus, practitioners should continuously cultivate the perfection of wisdom with a skillful means. With a skillful means. Very, very, very important. Remember in the, the bird, an undeveloped bird cannot fly in the sky. In order to fly in the sky, the bird needs two wings. In our daily life, I, you know, we, do, we don't talk about, you know, bodhicitta, great compassion, liberation. In your daily life, in our daily life, we need wisdom. You have to be very wise. The wise, the wisdom must combine with the compassion. Then your wisdom become very useful for your life. It becomes very useful for others. If your wisdom is just wisdom, not with the compassion, that the wisdom can be used for wrong purpose. Second, if you are very compassionate, you are a very <clears throat> generous person, you are a very loving person, you are a very caring person, if you don't have wisdom, if you are not in a wise, the first, many of your family cheat you, deceive you. Second, people who live around you, they cheat you, they deceive you, they use you. Right? We have experience. Therefore, the wisdom with the skillful mean. The skillful means with the wisdom, like two wings. Therefore, here the, the profession of wisdom with skillful means. Wisdom without skillful means. Wisdom without skillful means. A skillful means true without wisdom are referred to bondage. Therefore, do not give up either. Wisdom without, without skillful means and skillful means true without wisdom are referred to bondage. Therefore, do not give up either bondage, right? Many you have experience. Since you practice Mayan teaching, you try to be generous, you try to be a good heart, you know, good heart person, compassion person, then at the end you talk, Ayala. Right? You say many times, Ayo. Then, since you study like a, a Madhyamaka or Prajana Paramita, Pramana, and you learn how to analyze all the phenomena, how to analyze, how to be wise, how to achieve wisdom. If no uh, skillful means, no compassion, no bodhicitta, then the wisdom they call considered as a bondage because it increase your ego, increase your pride. Then you are really, you know, slander other. So many of our Dharma friends within the Dharma friends, first they are very good friends. 
slowly they become enemy each other because he thought oh she's very dumb cannot learn much then you really you know look down your dharma friends and your other dharma friends or she thought he thought oh i have been studying for many years i cannot learn much i don't understand much then you jealous you have dharma other dharma friends therefore you can see if we are not very careful studying dharma attending dharma class it just increase your ego attachment hatred jealousy anger maybe if due to that reason you can see buddhist people who live around the world we live with the many many groups my experience first time when i came to singapore first you know all uh, friends are together then soon i can uh, i can aware within the groups there are sub group within the sub group there are other group. finally maybe just two two people together may make a lot of groups when they make a groups then there is always you no know, discrimination therefore make sure please please everybody first you are totally freedom you have a totally free you know rights to follow dharma or not is totally up to you second if you think is a good to follow dharma or religion second you have a 100% rights to follow which religion when you follow religion you have to be very serious oh you consider oh i have upon the religion i follow buddhism i have been follow you know following following buddhism for many years good buddhism then i can you have 100% rights what kind of practice you follow the most importantly the dharma the knowledge the study of the dharma must show its conducive condition to increase your positive thoughts is it must be conducive is a kind of conducive condition to decrease your negative thoughts therefore without wisdom practicing love and compassion buddhichitta can be bondage right therefore here say very clearly wisdom without skillful means and and skillful means true without wisdom are referred to bondage therefore do not give up either either right to eliminate doubts concerning what is the wisdom and what is the skillful means i shall make clearly a difference a difference between skillful means and wisdom so maybe of course we have a what does what does mean skillful mean what does mean wisdom right this is a anisha say i will clearly differentiate this two apart from the perfection of wisdom apart from the perfection of wisdom all virtues practice such as as perfections of giving and uh describe a skillful mean by victorious ones that mean apart from the perfection of wisdom virtues practice the rest of the practice consider as a skillful mean except apart from the perfection wisdom any kinds of practice include into skillful means except you know apart from the uh, uh, the perfection wisdom for example meditate on you know impermanence meditating on, on impermanence eliminates the wrong view about the permanent but it cannot really eliminate the root of the suffering 
practicing compassion, you know, practicing compassion can draw the anger and hatred, reduce but cannot eliminate the root of the anger and attachment. So therefore, all other practices considered as a skillful mean or individual antidotes. Remember, uh, one of the sutras said, the antidotes which is taught by Buddha to eliminate anger cannot be eliminated ignorance. The teaching taught by Buddha for eliminating ignorance is can be antidotes for rest of the affliction emotions. Therefore, it's clearly explanation even between skillful means and wisdom. Whoever under the influence of the familiarity with the skillful mean, cultivate, cultivate wisdom. Whoever under the influence of the familiarity with skillful mean, cultivate wisdom, will quickly attain enlightenment, not just by meditating on selflessness. Right? Whoever under the influence of familiarity, therefore we all we are very familiar with the recitation, chanting, prostration, mandala offering, you know, also, you know, uh, belief in Buddha. So we have so many practices. All the practices must, you know, practitioner must cultivate wisdom. Until now, we have only one wing. We just flip, you know, the wing for many, many, many years. Therefore, we cannot fly in the sky. Second, what we need, we need the wisdom wing. Then we can achieve Buddhahood very quickly, very fast. Therefore, when we when I say this, right, also you feel yeah, is correct, is correct, is correct. When we listen, when you open the books, we can feel it's very correct. But it's not enough to say enough to believe it is correct. We need to correct ourselves. We need to correct. We need, we need to make a correction, right? Therefore, make sure wisdom with the skillful means, skillful means with the wisdom. In same way, recitation, chanting, whatever, we need to compound with the wisdom. When we practice wisdom, we need to compound with the skillful means. If you practice only one of you know, only one of them, it become bondage. Right? Make sure you fully understood. Then we will quickly attain enlightenment, not just by meditating on selflessness. Understanding emptiness of the inherent exists. This one we can talk later. So right now, what is it now? Okay, now we go in the uh, the, med uh, the middle meditation stage. As a revision, because we haven't used this book for quite a long time. At the beginning, it's very clearly said here, the intelligent who wish to actualize omniscient extremely quickly should make deliberate effort for full is cause and condition. Right? At, at the beginning, Kamala Shila, Kamala Shila or Kamala Sila said, the intelligent who wish to actualize omniscience extremely quickly should make deliberate effort or effort to fulfill its cause and condition, right? Cause and condition. Again, very practical, very practical. If you, if you wish to cook pizza, if you wish to cook laksa, you need to know what kind of, you know, uh, substance we need. You wish to cook pizza, you didn't buy enough things to cook pizza, how you can cook good pizza. You try to cook pizza, it cannot be pizza, the taste cannot be like pizza. Right? Therefore, 
deliberate the cause, fulfill the causes and condition. If we fulfill the, all the necessary cause and condition, the result automatically will come. We no need to put effort to you know, get the result. We must put effort to fulfill the causes and condition. That keep in mind. Therefore, we talk about achieving Buddhahood millions of times. If we wish to achieve omniscience, we need to fulfill the complete causes and condition. It is possible for omniscience to be produced. It is not possible for omniscience to be produced without causes. Right? Omniscient must come from the perfect causes. In order to achieve omniscient, we need to change our mind. Particularly, we need to turn in compassion, then love. In order to generate love and compassion, I already explained, first, we need to practice the equanimity as a foundation. Then in order to practice love and compassion, we need to identify the suffering of the three law realms, particularly, generally, we need to identify the nature of the suffering of the samsara. Generally, samsaric suffering, particularly the three lower realms. Then we can generate bodhicitta based on love and compassion. Now we will talk a little bit about the Kamabading. Page number 12. I think the chapter number kind of eight. Page number 12, if you have a same copy. If you don't, there's a practice of Kamabading. Kamabading meditation should be achieved first. Kamabading is that mind which is, has overcome destruction to external object and which is uh, spontaneously in the continuously turned towards the object of meditation with bliss and plancy. First, the definition of kamabading means kamabading is that that mind which is, has overcome destruction to the external objects. Overcome destruction to the external objects. And which is uh, spontaneously and continuously turned towards the object of meditation with bliss and plancy. This is the definition of kamabading. That then first, I said, first you need to learn how to stabilize your mind. The second, you will achieve Kamabadi. Kamabadi means overcome from the destruction of destruction to the external objects. Because we have a, so many destruction, almost 80 or 75 percent the destruction about the external things. Right? So, and also internally we have uh, so many thoughts. Externally we look at beautiful object, ugly object, we enter, you know, we enter when so many things, these are external destruction. So while you are sitting on the bus, on the MRT, what you can do, you, are, you do your personal thing. Or you can listen music, you, read, you can read, you know, like a books in your phone or your laptop, you can use the, the Kindle. You just do your own personal thing. Don't interfere with other things. What we do, we sit on the train, on the bus, we look at everybody. Oh, this wearing, this person wearing this colors, or oh, this person carrying this phone. What, 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 what? We do so many inter, 
you know, when for others, stop this thing, do your own personal thing. Then you can reduce the load of the, you know, destruction to the external object. Now internally, we have a destruction. Also, you do your own personal thing. Don't think too much for others. Sometimes we think too much. We have uh, so many thoughts. Most of the thoughts are not related in our daily life. Nothing. For example, you know, right now we are facing the COVID problem. You focus on your, your own health. Then you, maybe your families and friends. Don't, don't think, you know, what happened in Indonesia, Malaysia, China, India, Thailand. Why? You cannot do much. It just disturbs you. Therefore, externally, you need to reduce all the destruction. Internally, you need to reduce so many thoughts, which is not necessary for your daily life. It's not important for your life. It just brings a lot of destruction, makes you very unhappy, right? Reduce the destruction. Fully reduce the destruction that you achieve the Kama Bharding. And how we can achieve Kama Bharding is the question. That wish to properly examine the suchness for within the state of Kama Bharding is special insight. There's a quotation from one of the sutra. Kama Bharding meditation is single pointed mind. A special insight makes specific analysis of the ultimate. Right? Kama body means a mind which is focused on a chosen object. Kama body meditation is a single pointed mind. We just focus on just single object. Single object doesn't mean just one object. You can, you know, focus on 10 sentient beings, millions of sentient beings. The object, there, there are so many sentient beings, but the man just only focus all the sentient beings, not pot, food, clothes. Single means the chosen object. The focus on the chosen object. This means come about in the definition. Then what does mean special insight? A special insight makes specific, specific analysis of the ultimate. That means you focus on a, let's say, a cup. Your mind is fully focused on cup, not pen and pencil, just cup. Within the focus on the cup, then you analyze about the cup is impermanence. The cup is going to change. The cup is a uh, empty of inherent existence. Mean, now you can say your, your, your mind has a two functions. One, focus. At the same time, you are analyzing without losing the focus, right? So therefore, Kama Bharding mean focus on a object, just focus. Special insight, at the same time, analyze. When you have these two together, at the same time, then you can say you know, achieve special insight. Therefore, next class we will study more about the condition of karma body. Then we uh, study about the special insight based on the, the middle meditation stage. So please, everybody, you know, read this book as much as you can. You read, then you close the book. You try to remember the meaning. Read again, close the book, remember, try to remember the meaning, then try to apply as much as you can. That means you, are, you, are do, you must do, you know, experiment yourself. First read the books, close the book, think how much you can remember. Experiment. After you remember, then next you need to do experiment, how much you how much you can practice, 
how much you cannot practice do experiment then you can see the progresses progress otherwise close book you cannot remember anything you remember things in your mind you cannot practice you can practice but you cannot practice long therefore i request all of you to you know practice as much as you can in order to practice you need to study all the study you have make sure it always cause to increase the positive thoughts always cause to decrease the the negative thoughts okay next we can have a kind of uh, so we have still okay is there any question any question uh, I think Yuan has a question. Yuan, you can unmute yourself. Please. Uh, hi, can can you hear me? Because I yes. have audio issue. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, can hear, can hear. Uh, hi, Dishila. I have a question. It is on the seven points uh, training of the mind. Um, I, I think I missed some of your notes the previous week. Just want to clarify uh, the verse that says, by meditating on illusions as the four Buddha bodies, emptiness is protection unsurpassed. Uh, is this related to the fourfold practice? I just want clarity on this phrase. Oh, uh, no, no, no. It's nothing to do with the four, four, four practice. No, it's totally different. Okay. Yeah, it's different. So what does that actually mean? Meditate illusions as the four Buddha bodies? First, you need to know the, what are the four Buddha body, four Buddha's body. Rupakaya, Dharmakaya, Nirmanakaya, Sambhukakaya. Rupakaya, Dharmakaya, Nirmanakaya, Sambhugakaya, the four Buddha's bodies. Then, these four Buddha bodies also in the link practicing with the, the death, intermediate state, and the birth. Chiyo Chuku, Patulungu, Chiyo Chuku. Then, I think daily activities also link this one. Therefore, when something you know, appear to you, it causes to increase your any of the one of the negative thoughts. For example, beautiful object appear to you, it causes to increase your attachment or desire. Then the appearance of the beautiful object, the object itself, you need to look as a illusion or delusion, right? Then this kind of practice, you can link with the, one of the achievement of the four Buddha's bodies. These are, you need, you know, kind of uh, precise explanation. So if you are interested, you can just Google in the, I think there's a book, uh, I think mind training. Okay. You got Thubden Jimba collected all the Kadampa teaching in Tibetan language, then he translated into English. And then you, I think you, you can buy the books or you just read the books. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's a called mind training. There's oh. a few volumes. It's a collective. Then there's a very particular commentary on the seven points. Yes. Next question. Is there any question? Thank you. Yeah, Gishila, um, how, to uh, how to dispose uh, respectfully of those printed hard copies, Dharma teaching that caused by the printer problems? It's a, we really, this thing we really need to uh, apply according to the environment. So like Tibet, like Ladakh. So we have a huge, you know, empty land. And we build one particular 
that kind of house or room or place to put the, the ruin uh, dharma books, the ruin with a statue, salsa, painting, tanka, we just put inside the house. Singapore, you cannot do. Also, many people think, oh, it's better to burn in the fire. On the fire, it's, I can see it's okay, but now, you know, we are facing the, uh, the global warming, pollution. So we burn, you know, this kind of book on the fire, it produces a lot of smoke, the, your carbon is polluted the environment. The best, the best, what I believe I do usually, I bring directly to the recycle, paper recycle factory. Ask them to do the direct recycle. That means it's not going to you know, you know, affect the environment. The book will become against a paper we can reuse. So best you bring directly to the recycle area, ask them to do direct recycle, but not easy. When you bring there, most of the worker, you know, they don't have any respect to the holy books. They just throw on the with the other papers, but you really make sure is to go just directly to the recycle. This is the best. And before you recycle the books, yeah, you can do mantra. The most important, you just imagine, you visualize, for example, this is the Dharma book, right? We have all the words here. Before I recycle the books, before I burn this book on fire, I visualize all the words, all the teachings, you know, is separate from the paper, dissolved into Buddha. That means, imagine this book, it just became simple bunch of paper. Yes? Next question. Um, there is no question at the moment, Nishula. Okay, maybe almost time is over. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. You know, you all of you attend, have been attending the class. I really, really hope your dharma knowledge become better. You have a better dharma knowledge. Not you. You are you know having better dharma knowledge. I really hope you really practice apply the dharma in your daily life. Thank you so much. At the end, we do dedication, dedicate all the merit for world peace. Second, we dedicate the merit to benefit all sentient beings. In order to benefit all sentient beings, we really wish to be Buddha. Therefore, please dedicate the merit for becoming Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Jamba Bhavya Jidara Jamba Dung Kundu Zambu Adiyan Dijan the dog in Jesus or the Lord, and get one did the autumn jarab. Do some shape, get what I'm jay, more on La Chodo on up. Doggy gave it a one dip with your sample church here out of Thank you. Have a happy Sunday and be safe. Thank you.